आराम नहीं लेने देता उधर वहां आराम नहीं है वहां प्रोडक्शन बढ़ा रखी है इधर फैमिली प्रोडक्शन बढ़ा रखी है बोथ वेज इट इज इंटेंसिव दे आर ग्रो सो दीज कंट्रीज वर अपसेट आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट ट्वेंटी ईयर्स बैक कि वी आर नॉट हाईली इंडस्ट्रियलाइज बट ऑल द लेक्स ऑफ अवर कंट्रीज countries means norway sweden and finland they are highly acidic and the proof was the very superior quality of fish disappeared from the lakes i will show you one map why these people were so much worried because of acidic rains thank you this is norway sweden finland these areas are having a large number of lakes all these are because of the retreat of glaciers during the ice age all this area was under ice during the pleistocene period so when the ice retreated they left behind some lakes these lakes were clean water lakes very rich in fish but now these lakes are without fish they are blaming it to the high degree of industrialization of britain and germany because those countries are in that side and the westerly winds bring the clouds here the rainfall occurs and this rainfall is acidic consequently the lakes have become acidic the ecosystem or water ecosystem of all these lakes has been disturbed this is the effect of men earlier all these places were beautiful places to enjoy and they were getting some resource also a high quality of fish the next problem occurring because of more pressure of population more consumption of resources more consumption of energy is the ozone depletion the ozone layer is depleting i have covered this topic in climatology but let me show you one diagram this lower layer of the atmosphere is known as troposphere this is tro troposphere from the troposphere the greenhouse gases especially the cfc gases they are going going and crossing this entering into the stratosphere so this layer has become thin this thin layer is known as ozone hole hawa mein surakh to nahi ho sakta but here the molecules of uh, ozone have been reduced it has become thick layer consequently the ultraviolet rays especially in the spring and autumn season are reaching the earth surface and affecting adversely the organic life including human beings this is also the over interaction of man or more release of cfc gases <coughs> this topic i covered why there is more depletion of ozone in the southern hemisphere though most of the cfc gases are released in the northern hemisphere in the northern hemisphere we have more population more cfc gases air conditioning at more cfc gases air conditioning at sirta is in the northern hemisphere but anyhow the reason is a different one there are stratospheric clouds they do the next next effect is desertification this i asked as a short note also in the test series but people were not able to do justice with this short note see these are the pure deserts and where you are looking at the vertical shades i mean this area this is the sahel belt these areas are encroaching in the sideward outward all over the same is the case with the arabian desert this whole area including the thar desert of india there is more expansion of desert area because of over interaction you may see people are cutting the forest they are doing over grazing the reason may be anything but the area of desert is increasing this is also one of the impacts of man on environment or landscape the next one
is the environmental pollution. Pollution is increasing day by day. And actually the fresh air is not available to all the people. We have a nearby park developed for the citizens of Delhi. But there is a chowkidar, he charges 10 rupees per person to take fresh air in the morning time. And every morning he is earning a lot of money. I don't know who is collecting this money or this money goes to whom. So fresh air has become a, has become a rare commodity which is was given by nature free of course. We have polluted. All the locations are highly polluted. And pollution can be appreciated in the developing countries. The rivers of all the developing countries. It may be Nile River, Tigris River, Euphrates River. It may be the Yangtze Si Kyang, Havang Ho Si Kyang, or any good river or big river of India. All these rivers are highly polluted. Highly polluted because, number one, there is more pressure of population. Secondly, the people of the de developing countries are not disciplined countries. Disciplined citizens. They are not disciplined. They think everything can be thrown into the river. If there is any bad thing, they will throw it into the river. In other countries, there is a fine. I know that Thames River passes through London. London is both on both sides of Thames River. And Paris is on both sides of Seine River. Moscow is on both sides of Muscova River. The rivers are passing through, but the water is blue. There is enough boating. There are tourists all the time moving. But they cannot throw even a butt of a cigarette in the water. They are so disciplined. They don't throw even a small ticket of bus into the water. It is their training. They are trained for that purpose. And we are not trained. Hamari marzi. Jahanji chahe maha phekenge. That's why our water resource has become polluted. Not only Indian resource. Same is the case in Pakistan. All these river, Ravi's, Indus river, they are highly polluted. The situation is becoming worse. And without water we cannot survive. Because water provides us drinking, agriculture irrigation, Water is required in industries. Water goes underground also. There are many uses, domestic use of water, but surface water has been polluted. Not only surface water has been polluted by man, he has polluted the underground water also. The underground water table is not actually clean water. Pahle saaf pani hand pump ka kuwe ka peete the. Ab pee ke dekhiye. Agar bach ke aajayin, bhoat badi water hogi. This is actually condition. The, some of the villages of Punjab have applied to their government that our village should be shifted to some other place. Because the underground water table has been polluted. They are creating more problem and problems of cancer plus problem of high blood pressure. These two diseases have become very important in Punjab, especially after the Green Revolution. I was talking in Hindi one day that green revolution has done many good things, but it has adversely affected the soil health and the water health also. So these are some of the adverse effects. Then man is producing more garbage every day. The dumping has become a problem. We have to dump it. This is a serious problem in the developing countries. We never imagine that the urban places will be so big places. They grew very fast. And now the modern way of life is western style of life. At the top, we are using the polybags, etc. And polybags, etc. don't decompose very quickly. They take hundreds of years or maybe more than hundred years of they are taking. Consequently, from each house, garbage, solid and liquid is going. And that is creating a problem. We have to dump all these things. In developed countries, I know, they have the mines and especially the mines of granites. The deep mines from where they have taken the granite, they dump their all garbage in those open pits of granite. Granite is very hard. I checked it at several places. And the same thing I found in 
Netherlands, they created artificial mountains. Artificial mountains along the railway tracks. When you travel from Amsterdam to Rotterdam or from Rotterdam to Endoven, any big city, you will find that they are artificial mountains. And on the artificial mountains, they have planted trees and green pastures. Lush green, they are maintaining. But the beauty is the country is a small country. The total population is 15 million. And they are maintaining their environment very neat and tidy. Their standard of living is very high. But they know how to actually convert this garbage into a mountain. Artificial mountains with peaks, etc. And picnic spots at all these places they have created. So these are some of the points which you can keep in mind. That man has changed the environment. And more he is changing, more troubles he is inviting for himself. Because nature is silent. Nature ki bahut, jisko tolerance hai, sahen shakti bahut hai. Nature is silent. But when nature takes the revenge, tab admi hahakar karta hai, tab rota hai. He never actually realized that we should not over interact with nature. Kehte humne Antarctica pe observatory kaim kar di. Arre bhai kahi to chain se rehne do. Tumhe aur bahut dunia de rakhi hai. You are disturbing the ecology and environment of Antarctica also by setting your labs and drilling and doing so many exploratory work. This is the ambitious nature of man that he is over interacting but in the process of interaction he is creating more problems for himself. He delays the actually problems for a time being but finally the nature prevails. Therefore all the geographers are realizing now that the deterministic approach has not disappeared. Ultimately, nature is supreme. Nature or God, God is supreme. If you are a believer, or as a believer, now just a Baba Ram, just a Dusi Tragi Chise, even even if you believe in the supremacy of endogenetic or exogenetic forces, they are superior. You cannot and should not over interact with, with nature. Now these people of Uttarakhandi Arjun Singh, they said, give a slogan, I remember, that we are going to convert Uttarakhand into Urja Pradesh. Urja. To construct so many dams, to generate more hydro power, to supply to the other states of the country. The program was very good, but nature prevails. Under this scheme, to generate more hydro power, they check the course of Bhagirti. Bhagirti is coming here. Alaknanda is here. A dam has been created here, Tihri Dam. Tihri Dam is more than one kilometer in height. Imagine. The retaining wall is more than one kilometer. What is the depth of water? You can imagine. And this is a highly seismic zone. This is a seismic zone. It comes under the category, fifth category. Himalayan belt. The plates are moving. You know in, it in geomorphology. So, this is highly prone to earthquakes. Prone to earthquakes. And the next serious earthquake is due in Uttarakhand. All the experts of seismology, all the Indian experts and the outside experts, they are saying the next serious earthquake of more than eight on the Richter scale, more than 8 on the magnitude, on the Richter, will be in the Uttarakhand. And man will be responsible for that. If it happens, 50% of the population of northern India will disappear and the problem of food will be solved. This is actually the man's over interaction with nature. So I thought this question will not be covered. But since it is given in your course, you want to listen something about every topic. In between, I will be covering the topics of the biogeography and environmental geography, which I skipped. For that, you have to wait. But now, let me start the geography of India.
remember second paper carries 250 marks it is 50 percent of the total course of geography so never take this paper lightly because it has equal value if you say i have command on geomorphology or human geography that is only 50 percent of your syllabus equally important is the geography of india and in geography of india securing good marks is always a problem getting good marks in geography in geography of india is always a problem in unless you master a few units and note down what what is more important in the second paper somewhere you can note down number one map of india number one map of india you can score if the map value is 25 you can score 24 this is the only question which has numerical value the examiners give full marks on this question in others they never give more than 60 or best may be getting 65 percent agar 65 percent se upar jata out of 20 if he is giving 12 or 13 he reads the question again are iske tera number are out of 20 main to second division pe top karke aaya this is the psyche of some of the examiners they feel whether this candidate deserves 65 percent or not securing 60 percent is not a problem you will get provided you follow certain principles of answering so map can put you very high therefore please repeatedly do the map entries i have completed about 40 if i am correct 40 maps of india and at least eight entries will be coming from the entries I, we did in the class and if eight out of ten are correct you are a very good student one or two may be freak entries which may be from the current events from contemporaries or something that cannot be predicted but eight you will be getting from the traditional entries that question should be mastered properly those who are going this year they have very little time for this those who will be appearing the mains next year they have enough time so devote about 10 15 minutes to the map question every day that will help you here. so map is most important in the second paper because all the examiners they check the map first and gather some impression about the quality of the candidate or his answers number two the first unit physical setting of india physical setting of india will give you 50 marks and this is very scoring because you don't have to write much from your side if it is the structure of india you have to reproduce the answer if it is the topographical regions or physiographic regions of india again you have to give the geographic regions described by different <coughs> scholars of uh, geography if it is monsoon mechanism the answer is given if it is seasons of india you cannot write other than what is written if it is soils of india or vegetation of india they are perfect answers set answer to be managed in the given time keeping whether it is 20 marks 15 marks or 10 marks question that is to be so this unit always gives 50 marks so that is most important i remember in 2007 it gave 120 marks one question was the, on the structure of india the second was on the monsoon mechanism each carrying 60 marks you can imagine one unit given 120 marks but now the pattern of paper has changed if he is asking one question from the first unit physical setting of unit india the second may be the second part of the same question may be from the agriculture of india the third part may be from the industries of india but anyhow in different questions you will find minimum 50 marks from physical setting of india so do this physical setting very carefully and i will be teaching physical setting of india right from the beginning the second important unit which in my opinion is very important is the agriculture of india this is a unit 
I don't remember what is, whether it is third unit or fourth unit in the syllabus, agriculture of India. Third unit. Third unit. So 50 marks you will get from agriculture. It may be 40, upper limit 50. And 40 is not less. Because still India is in villages. Only 31 or 32 percent is the urban population. Rest of the people are living in, in the villages. And they are doing agriculture. So any paper setter never ignores agriculture. He gives enough weight. And agriculture will not be covering the crops grown in different parts. So the temperature rainfall required for different crops. The questions will be technical questions. The questions may be on agricultural intensity, land capability, crop combination regions, agricultural fertility and productivity, and the different techniques used for this. That is the area important. One question important in that agricultural geography is the green revolution and consequences of green revolution. That is important. There are some less important topics like aquaculture in India, white revolution in India, there may be question of dry farming. That is again a 50 marks unit which you have to pay enough attention. The third most important in my opinion is the cultural setting of India. Cultural setting of India. That is the I think sixth unit. Paul you can bear me out, I am not very sure with that. The sixth unit cultural that also gives 50, 50 marks deals with the population and settlement <coughs> and next important in my opinion is the 10th unit current issues contemporary issues master these four units and give some reading to industries of India transport of India maybe regional planning of India wo ek ek din this way we have to proceed. And our target should be to secure 150 marks in second paper. That is not a problem. Viswas, our student who got IS last time, his score was 163 in the, in the second paper. He got more marks, a Bengali uh, a student of mine, he got 163. If he can get 163, why we cannot get? The advantage was his nine entries were correct. Secret mahi par hai. So please give enough time to it. Now before I start, I give one advice. Mane aap na mane, wo aap marzi. But I have to give you an advice. Take one butter paper from any of the stationery shop. This is a paper. One is known as a tracing paper. I am not saying tracing paper. I am saying butter paper. On one butter paper, trace two maps or one map of India from the atlas of a smaller size, of this size. And on that outline map of India, move pencil every day 3-4 minutes. Don't go for the minor curve. But the broader curve, Kathiawad, etc. or Kashmir, etc. or Kashmir, move this pencil for about a week and you will be the master of the outline map of India. Outline, you cannot be dry perfect outline, but your map will look like the map of India. Better than the map of other students. Secondly, all maps should be of the same size. When you are giving maps in your answers, the map should be of the same size. It should not be ke ek to chota sa bana diya, ek pura bada bana diya. It shows you are not disciplined. You are not methodical. All these things matter when the examiner is checking your answer book. So if you follow me and you want to secure better marks, and I know you want to secure better marks, trace uh, the outline map of India on a butter paper and move pencil for about a week, automatically you will start drawing the right map of India. That is required. Because in the second paper, apart from the question of India, map entries in India, the second most important thing is no question should be attempted without a map. If there is a short note, there should be a map also there. If there is a bigger question of 15 marks, we should give two maps. And if there is a bigger question of 20 marks, we should try to give more than two maps. 
and there will be many questions in which you have to give four five maps and four five maps in 20 minutes then how much is left for writing so your speed should be good and his speed should be not be good in writing it should be good in drawing of map of India for example if there is a question on the monsoon mechanism you have to draw three four maps minimum but a person like me will be giving six seven maps with few sentences to explain what the, what is the effect of Tibetan plate what is the effect of Alino what is the effect of jet stream all these things I will show on the map with the help of me so if you are giving on the whole listen it may be scary drawn up bhayanak lagta hai if you give 25 maps in 3 hours I am saying 20 to 25 maps in 3 hours your score will be 150 your score in the second paper will be 150 provided your 7, 8 entries are also correct आप कहेंगे ये कैसे हो सकता है ये होता है आप तो यही कहेंगे दिल है कि मानता नहीं कि 20 25 नक्शे कैसे बनाएंगे बट इट इज पॉसिबल इफ यू मास्टर द आर्ट ऑफ ड्राइंग द आउटलाइन मैप ऑफ इंडिया देन इन 30 सेकंड्स यू कैन ड्रा द आउटलाइन मैप मैप ऑफ इंडिया 1 मिनट यू कैन डिवोट फॉर द शेडिंग इनर डिटेल्स व्हाट्स एवर यू वांट टू शो सपोज द इंडस्ट्रियल आयरन स्टील इंडस्ट्री Six, seven, eight, nine. You can plot and give their names also. That needs about one minute. So one and a half minute and six maps in ten minutes. Ten minutes for writing. This is the way how to do. ये जो लंबे चौड़े आपके पैराग्राफ होते हैं, nobody is interested in your writing. The examiners they feel very bored. A stereotype of answer. And some of the handwritings are not easily readable. They are illegible. अब वो उसको क्या दिलचस्पी है कि आप ऐसा लिखते हैं कि वो पढ़ा भी नहीं जाता। जब ये condition होती है तो generally students get average marks or below average and our target is high. We want to secure better marks than others. इसलिए keep these points in mind. Four five units are more important. Rest also I will cover. It does not mean I will be covering only these four or five. I will cover the whole syllabus, but the focus should be more on these because there are some students who are going for the mains in the next month in October. Now, the first topic of this course is space relationship. I think this question was asked last year 10 marks and if it was asked last year it will not be asked this year. Those who are going for the mains this year they should take it lightly. This is actually what is the geographical location of India and what is this country surrounded by and what is the significance of its geometric location in the world perspective. So, since it has been asked and it is not a difficult question, I will give you some points. Note down the points and that is the answer of this question. Is space relationship of India. India has about 2.4 percent of the total land area of the world. And supports more than 17 percent of the world population. stop in area in area it is the seventh largest country it 
इंडियाज ईस्ट वेस्ट एक्सटेंशन इज अबाउट टू थाउजेंड नाइन हंड्रेड थर्टी थ्री किलोमीटर टू थाउजेंड नाइन हंड्रेड थर्टी थ्री किलोमीटर एंड नॉर्थ टू साउथ थ्री थाउजेंड टू हंड्रेड फोर्टीन थ्री थाउजेंड फोर हंड्रेड सॉरी थ्री थाउजेंड टू हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टीन दिस इज एक्चुअली इट मीन्स फॉर पीटी पर्पज अवर लेंथ इज फ्रॉम नॉर्थ टू साउथ इज वॉर एज कंपेयर फ्रॉम वेस्ट टू ईस्ट कंटिन्यू इट इज बाउंडेड बाई Pakistan and Afghanistan in the west Pakistan and Afghanistan in the west comma China Nepal and Bhutan in the north comma Myanmar and bangladesh in the east is stop in the south it is separated by a narrow channel of water dash known as pak strait from sri lanka stop continue the peninsular india is projected into the indian ocean is projected into the indian ocean surrounded by the arabian sea Arabian Sea Bay of Bengal and the Indian Ocean is to in the north the watershed of greater himalayas the in the north the watershed of the greater himalayas and the karakoram mountains karakaram mountains make the natural boundary between india make the natural boundary between india and china next line climatically no sorry the tropic of cancer the tropic of cancer passes passes through the central part of india through the central part of india to the south of this to the south of tropic of cancer is the tropical climate and to the north of this is the subtropical subtropical and temperate climates actually the climate of jammu and kashmir himachal pradesh and uttarakhand that is subtropical region but because of elevation the temperature is low that is like the european conditions this much you can write next sentence the sea ports of india the sea ports of india remain open throughout the year which is a big advantage 
for international trade and commerce. Stop. About 98 percent, about 98 percent of our international trade is done through the sea routes. Continue. In the West, through the Suez Canal, through the Suez Canal, India is connected with the highly developed countries of Europe. Stop. In the East, through the Malacca state, Malacca, M-A-L-A-C-C-A, -A -A, through the Malacca state, India has access to Southeast Asian countries, China, Japan and Korea. India is also connected with Australia and New Zealand. through the state of Malacca. Yes, please come. Through the state of Malacca. Write down this. Geopolitically, India has a special strategic advantage. It is in the southern part of Asia. Surrounded by about 55 coastal countries, coastal countries and landlocked countries. All these countries are third world countries. All these countries are third world countries. So, India is leading these countries in the world affairs. So, this location of India is very special. This is the answer actually, space relationship. And since it has been asked, I think last year it will not be asked. If you need more, though last year it was a 10 marks question, somebody who is appearing in the mains this year, and if they check the paper, they can tell me what was the value. Either last year or year before last, this question was asked. Space relationship, it is not going to be repeated. And in case it is a 10 marks question, this much of text, it is more than 150 words. Plus, you have to give a map of Asia, showing Indian Ocean also, in which project India, the peninsular India, that map is required. So, through the Suez Canal, it is connected with European countries. Through the Gulf of Malacca, it is connected with the Southeast Asian countries, Japan and China. And we have access to New Zealand and Australia also. That is the answer. But in the books it is written at great length. Because they describe the topographical features also in the north. It is a mountain. There is nobody who attacked India from northern side. All those things are irrelevant so far as the 10 marks question is concerned. For a 10 marks question, about 120 words, at the most 130 words, plus one map is required. But it ye bharti ka topic hai because I know it will not become. The important topic I start now. 
that is structure and relief of India. In my opinion, this is an important topic in the first unit, physical setting of India. Before I go into the detail, let me tell you there is a difference between structure and relief. Structure means the geological history of rocks, not on this center. Structure means the geological history of rocks. and it covers the oldest to the youngest rocks of India. And stop for a while. Listen me, I will be giving you more points. Because this is a lengthy topic and this is a difficult topic. And you don't enjoy when you read this topic from the book. Because ye bejaan hai, rock se deal karta hai, jad padarth hai, arjun jante hai, jad kisko kehte hai, non-living. So non-living cheez aadmi ko attract nahi karti, living karti hai. Is liye isko padhne mein anand aata hai nahi. But unfortunately this topic is not taught properly in most of the यूनिवर्सिटी डिपार्टमेंट जो एमए करके आए हैं ज्योग्राफी उनसे मैं संबोधित हूं इसको पढ़ाते नहीं क्योंकि जब पढ़ाएंगे तो पढ़ना पड़ेगा और टीचर्स को पढ़ने की आदत नहीं होती उनको नंबर देने की आदत होती है देखो यू वेरी गुड मार्क्स विदाउट टीचिंग बच्चे खुश रहते हैं सो इफ यू सी द रॉक्स ऑफ इंडिया इंडिया हैज सम ऑफ द ओल्डेस्ट रॉक्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड and secondly, India has some of the youngest rocks of the world. Oldest are the igneous rocks. They are known as Archean rocks. The greater part of the peninsular India is Archean. Go to Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, you will find Archean rocks. They are granites. Or there may be basalt, the lava plateau. So these, so these rocks are very old. Listen to me, I 